What's up everybody? Well, it's President's Day 2012, which makes it an absolutely miserable day to do any job hunting because more than a few businesses observe this holiday and close down and the post office is closed. So what I'll do is work on a computer instead and pick everything up tomorrow. Now this is the machine that I've been slowly but surely putting together for my dad since autumn of 2010. Yeah, I know, slowpoke, right? Well, basically what's been going on, it's been, it's been one holdup after another. I've had to buy new hardware from my machines, then rotate some to make it available for this one, for him, and I found stuff that wasn't working, and it's just been one thing after another. But today, I want to actually make some significant progress on this thing, if not, you know, set it on the road to being complete. Now, my dad plans on using this machine as his backup computer, but I want to build it well enough that he actually wants, that he will actually want to use it as his main system. Right now what he's got for a computer is an e-machine that he had, that he's had since 2007. Yeah, I know, you're already laughing. It's an e-machine, right? That's, that's where the problems are coming from. Yep, that and it's running Windows Vista. So problem number two, he's already got two strikes against him. And he complains about how slow the thing is and how annoying it is and how things keep crashing. And I imagine one reason is probably because of the five-year-old hard drive if it's from 07. You know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 13, yep, we're up around the five-year mark. So hard drives can be a pain in the neck after three to five years if they don't break entirely. Plus, the machine that he's using is a stereotypical cheap computer that doesn't have enough RAM. You'll know him when you see him. You, you see these cheap little $300 specials in the stores or something like that, and they, have, they don't have enough RAM, so they're constantly referring over to virtual memory in order to run the system, and it slows the machine way down, of course, especially since it had, would probably have a mechanical hard drive. And we can make a whole video just on how cheap compu computers are built, but I don't want to focus on that. I just want to focus on this. So I got some tools ready to go. Got an anti-static mat that's plugged into a ground prong on a power strip for grounding, which of course comes with an anti-static strap. I don't want to fry anything. I've, you know, usually I find that I can get away with not using the strap if I'm just handling metal components, but not anywhere near the circuit boards. I don't want to take that risk. I know there's discrete electronics components that can that are affected by electrostatic discharge, never mind um, integrated circuits or anything like that. Plus, it's a relatively dry day in the middle of winter, so <laughs> the potential for static is definitely up there. Now, what do we got? We got two optical drives because I have two ancient optical drives from the turn of the millennium that have since turned yellow. Of course, the banana cream donut, or the Boston cream donut color of this place doesn't help with yellowish footage on these <laughs> on the videos I make. Let's see if I can get down here and see. Yep, it's even got an old floppy drive. Though, him and I both use floppies like once in a blue moon. I'm actually planning on getting rid of the floppy drive the next time I buy a new case for my main system. This is a four-speed, quad-speed DVD-ROM. Doesn't do any burning whatsoever. It's from the turn of the millennium. This machine, this drive was the first drive in the, was the drive that came with the very first computer he ever owned, an old Dell from 2000 that was made for Windows Millennium Edition. And we've got here a CD burner, a 52 by two, by, uh, 52 by 24 by 52, basically CD only drive. Both of these drives, well, the DVD one still works. This one is a little unreliable, but I'd rather just get rid of both of these because these are POTA drives. And because of this, we gotta mess with ribbon cables and stuff. So I don't wanna mess with ribbon cables. I wanna bring him into at least the mid 2000s with serial ATA stuff. So these two light-ons are Tuxedo's old drives. I replaced Tuxedo's drives with two brand new light-ons that actually match. And we're gonna put these in as the optical drives. They're both serial ATA, so no dinosaur cables for us here. The only thing dinosaur really is gonna be the floppy drive on the front. This is an Antec case, obviously, from the case badge. I also have another Newegg case badge on here from back in the day, which I may take off one of these years if, because <laughs> I like making these things look professional. And this case actually originally housed an AMD Athlon, the one from my, uh, the one from my original HP. So that's why I took an Athlon XP sticker and cut the bottom off. <laughs> that's me being cheap, but trying to make the machine look professional at the same time. I actually like how this, this Antec case is built. I wanted a case like this after I got this for him. This was originally a case that we used. It's got a little door, which doesn't stay shut. Cheap plastic doors. But yeah, this thing has a, uh, 
But yeah, I got this from my dad when, you know, I had the remnants of my old HP and he had his old Dell and we basically combined parts to make a working computer out of the whole deal. So this thing has definitely been home to more than, than the occasional hack job computer. Matter of fact, those of you that have been with this channel for years may actually remember this machine from the Thanksgiving special I did way back in 2006 that I should probably retro reel one of these Thanksgivings. The case is pretty decent. It's actually very well sealed as far as noise goes. Matter of fact, most hard drives sound like a coffee percolator when they make when they do their thing inside a case like this. Ah. It's hard doing this only one hand. I just cracked the CD case with the metal. But anyways, we pop this open. And here we have what we have to work with so far. We've got semi toolless for a lot of this type of stuff. A lot of these drive cages come out automatically. The three and a half inch drive bays will come out like that. The hard drive cage actually slides straight out towards you. So you can actually undo that clip at the bottom and slide everything out. Now I don't know what all these drives are. I don't think we're even going to need all these drives when this thing's finally up and running. I think I've been using this as a storage box <laughs> to be quite honest. I've been looking for a serial ATA main drive though and I've got one that I'm going to install so I'm going to actually end up replacing all of these. I don't think uh, if he needs any data off of any of these drives and by all means we'll, we'll get everything for him but by and large he doesn't need that many hard drives. For a motherboard we have an Asus A8N Sly Premium from 2005. This was the first computer I built after this was the, the main board that I used for the first computer that I built after the original silver bullet machine succumbed to capacitor plague. And so it's good to see that even all these years later, this motherboard still has no signs of any bursting capacitors of any sort. So it's avoided the fate of its predecessor. For a processor, we have an AMD Athlon X, not XP, AMD Athlon 64 4000 single core, the fastest single core processor on the consumer level, at least, that AMD ever released prior to messing around with dual core and all this other stuff. It'll still pack a little bit of a punch these days. And th this, this board is actually rock solid. The reason why I got rid of it was not because of any performance or stability issues, but because of some pricing shenanigans that were going along going on at the time for the RAM. This thing's got a little bit of RAM in it. I think it might have, I think it has one and a half gigs. Can't remember what the type was. But what, ha what happened was, I went to get more RAM for this thing to expand the memory. And the RAM prices were very suspicious and very expensive. No matter how, no matter what RAM you were buying, whether it was the latest RAM technology or SD RAM, which was technology from several years earlier back then, it would always cost the same. I was like, this doesn't look right. I mean, why are they charging so much for RAM? Well, later on, I got a notice from a, a legal group that there was a class action lawsuit against memory manufacturers for, <laughs> for price fixing. So I don't know if the two incidents were related, but sadly, that's this. I you know I wouldn't have gotten rid of this thing if it wasn't for the fact that RAM was so disgustingly expensive back then that it made more sense just to build a new system. For plug-in cards, we have an Albatron G4 6600 for a video card. I'm going to try the Stalker card first. Remember what I said about the whole killing the contacts thing? I want to see if that still works. So we want I, we want to take care of that. And we got for other cards, what do we have in this thing? Uh, let's see. Yeah, we got a TV card because I was tossing around the idea of him using this as a VC. Oh, yeah, that's why I have all the drives in there. I want to give him plenty of space because I want to kind of introduce him to the idea of using a computer as a VCR so he can maybe hopefully start to move away from real VCRs and having to constantly buy yard sale VCRs that eat up tapes and stuff like that. You know, he is stubbornly sticking to VHS because it's because the technology still works for the guy. I mean, he has a tube TV after all. Sound card, Sound Blaster Audigy. Used to have the front panel, but I'm not going to install it on here. I think some of these jacks are getting a little worn too, so, you know, as long as it still gives a little bit of sound. And lastly, on the very bottom, the voice modem, because he stubbornly insists on using AOL and dial-up, which is why I'm going to download all kinds of software and Windows updates on this thing while it's on the broadband here, because I know how it goes with him. He's like, oh, everything's slow, downloading, and this and that. I'm like, why don't you get broadband of some sort? Oh, well, all I do is type email. <laughs> We, I can make a whole video about this discussion we've had going back and forth the last couple of years, but I'm not going to. You know. Anyway, the whole respect your elders thing. 
Lastly, but mostly, but definitely not least, Antec True Power 2, 480 watts. This thing should be more than capable of powering this system and keeping it nice and stable. 120 millimeter fan, which is one of the big things I liked about this case back when I first got it, because my last case before this one had 80 millimeter cooling fans and it was loud. It also has a spot to add another one in the front and dust filters on the air intake. So I don't, but I don't think that's going to be an issue with this. Cooling's not going to be an issue with this thing at all. For an OS, we'll do Windows XP Professional. This is my older copy of it. Not using it for anything right now, actually, since making since moving my main machine to Windows 7. So we'll put this one on there, update the living daylights out of it, and I know that support's being pulled for XP in a year or two, but we'll see what we can get out of it at the very least. You know, maybe by then the economy will be better, and maybe we can look at getting in Windows 7 or something like that. Or heck, for all I know, maybe it'll be cheap because Windows 8 will be out by then. But he's been suffering under Vista for a long time, but before that he used Windows 2000. So let's um, show him what he was missing all those years with how XP Service Pack 3 really kind of got everything right for once with operating systems and things along those lines. And for Mr. Backup over here, if I need to look anything up on the internet or something along those lines, I have the crap top ready to go running off the wireless. Okay, first order of business, and probably the easiest order of business, the clock battery went dead in this thing after however many years it's been. That's easy to fix. Well, the clock battery's in, which was a pain in the neck because I had to take the sound card out to get at the battery. And what we're rocking here is a Creative Autogy EAX HD, circa the early 2000s, 96 decibel, uh, 96 decibel signal to noise ratio. This thing supports surround sound, but I know my dad's only going to use two speakers with it. And here is one of the most annoying things about this sound card, was the connection to the front panel had a proprietary ribbon cable, so the cable was irreplaceable. Plus, where I come from, proprietary is a swear word. And as you can see, some plugging and unplugging kind of bent some of the pins on the very end, so it was always a nervous wreck type thing whenever you try to hook one of these up, because if those pins break, it's done. Well, I'm not going to have to worry about that again, because this card's never going to have a front panel again. We'll just use the back panels, although I am concerned about some of these jacks maybe getting a little old and scratchy in their old age. Okay, the drives are out of the drive cage. Now here's another thing I like about this case. There's rubber grommets where the drives attach to the case to help dampen the noise from them. That's a nice touch, but the screws that they use for these things are just weird. They're like little top hat things, and some of them are getting a little, uh, some of them are getting a little stripped. So I'm probably not going to put all these drives back in because there's a mix of SATA and Perla ATA drives in here, and I think I want everybody that I... I think I want my dad to be done with parallel ATA drives, so I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Maybe put them into plug-in enclosures or something like that, but let's take a look at what we got here. First, oh no, a Maxter. Yeah, I've not had very good luck with Maxters over the years. This is a model 5409HU8, manufactured 30th of May 2000. This thing's 12 years old, and as far as I know, it still works. 40 gigs, really whiny drive motor. And this is the one that I was making fun of a couple of years back when I mentioned my own hard drive woes, that I had Maxters that were two, three years old that were seizing up right at the end of their warranty period. Meanwhile, this was the drive that was running A-OK -okay at home uh, that my dad had been using all that time. And this is definitely the older. It looks, feels like it's built like a tank, though. You know how big this thing is. You don't see hard drives this thick anymore. But yeah, 54098U8, manufactured May 2000, still works, but uh, it's parallel ATA, so I'm probably not going to bother putting it in the new machine for him. Seagate Barracuda, 160 gigs. This used to be my data drive back when I still used parallel ATA data drives because they were cheap back when SATA drives were first coming out. So I was like, okay, I'll use a high performance SATA for my system drives and store everything on slow parallel ATA drives. But I'd rather not mess with ribbon cables. This, this drive probably still works, but it's parallel ATA, so I'm going to find something else to do with it. And I got a second one too, because I this is the uh, these were the first two drives that I use in my data array, where I use a sync program to sync one drive to the other, which gives me a real easy one-click backup for the stuff that I'm storing, and I don't hopefully don't lose any more data like that and anything other than a lightning strike. Next drive, a little heavier and beefier. This was the this is serial ATA, so this will go into the machine. Another Seagate Barracuda. 
120 gig. Yeah, this is, I think this is the first serial ATA drive I ever owned, and uh, or at least the first Seagate after I started trying to make my systems Maxter free. Is there a date code on here? I don't know if 06246 means it was made in 2006, but here it is. <laughs> this will be the backup drive, because I, I have a SATA drive that's newer and bigger than I'll use for the operating system, and then we'll, this will just be extra space for him. If, it, if he uses the machine as a DVR and plugs it into the cable TV, then you know we can look at expanding the capacity with more drives. But for now, I just want to see if he uses these two first, and I don't know what I'm going to do with these parallel ATA drives, but I'll figure something out. And the last hard drive is a real blast from the past, Quantum Fireball. Ho, ho, ho. Here's something that's really old for you. Anything, any manufacturing information? Uh, seven and a half gigs, Quantum Fireball. Oh, man. Yeah, this was the drive in his original Dell, and it kept on working and working and working, so we kept on using it. I'm not seeing anything for any kind of date code on here. Hmm. Maybe if I'm not looking through the camera's viewfinder, I'll actually be able to read it a little better. Uh, let's see here. Does that mean anything? I suppose I could look it up if I really wanted to. Nope. No dice. Nope, no dice. But either way, hey, Quantum Fireball. That's probably a name that a lot of you folks haven't seen in quite some time. <laughs> Now, the main drive that's going to be running the whole kit and caboodle is this, Seagate Barracuda 250 gig SATA. Now, this drive is a lot newer. It's from my old data array before I switched to two one terabyte drives for all the data and programs and stuff. Anything basically that I'm not installing on the SSD at this point for the main system. So this is a relatively recent drive, and I hope it behaves itself. My biggest concern with hard drives sitting around is, you know, they're mechanical devices, so they, they could seize up if they sat in a cold room for too long, but this one didn't. But, so let's see how it works. Okay, the hard drives are in. Now, the next big obstacle is going to be getting the optical drives out. The reason why this is going to be a bit of an obstacle is because these drives are on rails to be pulled out from the front, but as you can see, there's no way of getting at them without taking the whole front cover off. And it's a little annoying to get the front cover off. Some people might consider that a good thing, though, in terms of securing things in place. Well, that was easier than I remember it. You hit these two buttons down here, and then you gotta have it kind of slide forward because the top hinges come off like this. And we look at that, we see the dust filter there, which is nice and clean, doesn't need to be cleaned out. And then again, this machine hasn't been used since the last time I blew the dust out. Anyways, there's what we've got to work with. Let's get these optical drives switched out and some more parallel ATA cables out of the machine. Actually, no. Before I take the rails off of these things, check this out. Now, this drive is pretty normal looking. It's a parallel ATA optical drive. It's obviously a CD burner from several years ago. We've got the rails ready to be taken off. That looks like a somewhat normal drive. And now, check out this beast. Ha! If this thing ever focuses. There we go. Check this out. Look at all that extra stuff on the back. This is what they made DVD burners with back in 2000, huh? All this extra space. Uh, miniaturization affects all kinds of technology. I took this, I'd forgotten that this thing actually had that. What do we have for an aug for a manufacture date? Kind of hinted at it with my slip right there, but ooh, August 2000. So yeah, huh. DVD drives have definitely changed. I mean, let's take one of the ones that I'm actually replacing it with and put it on top for comparison purposes. Here's a light on from not too long ago. It's almost like video cards, how they have the differing lengths and stuff like that. But yeah, thing we've definitely have come a long way in terms of uh, optical drive technology over the past couple of, well, ten years. <laughs> okay, the optical drives are in, which looks a little ugly because the colors don't match, but oh well, at least the machine will work. But more importantly, those drives are in, but these are out. These were the old rounded parallel ATA cables. And these cables were cool back in 2002 when you didn't want ribbon cables messing up the airflow in your systems. But nowadays, they're just a pain to work with. I mean, they're like garden hose compared to your average serial ATA cable. And you can't, probably can't see this too well, but the plastic's starting to yellow. These things are pretty much just under 10 years old. They would have turned 10 this year. But I'm glad they're finally out for good. And I think I'm done with parallel ATA and all the systems I have anything to do with from this point forward. 
All right, everything's in. A little bit of spaghetti up in the upper right, but that shouldn't affect the airflow too much because most air in these cases gets sucked in from the bottom right and gets blown out the top left by the power supply. Plus, this is a relatively old system, and I don't like the design here where it's got an extra power. It takes more power to the video card slot in case you're using Sly, but you have to drape a cord all the way over the top of the motherboard like this just to plug that in. Not the best design in the world, that's for sure. But let's hook this thing up, see how much of it works. I'm going to try it with the stalker card and see if the clean contacts uh, actually make a difference. I don't think they will, but it'd be cool if it did. Will the computer start on the first try? Will the crappy video card take down the entire system? Will this project just be one giant pain in the neck? Tune in next time to find out right here on the Multimedia J Vlog.